In this video, we're going to set up Data Guard on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, otherwise known as Oracle Bare Metal Cloud. And we're going to avail of all these new features with the new infrastructure of off box virtualization and a very flat uh, network with just two hops between object storage and compute or anything on the network. So, everything we do in this video is covered in the official documentation, which I'll link in the description of this video. Oracle's new infrastructure with its bare metal capability enables huge advances in performance and security with very low latency between data centers and regions. And much of this capability is enabled by placing the virtualization into the network fabric and off the instance itself. So this is the architecture we're going to set up in this video. So we're going to set up two database instances in different availability domains. And we're going to configure data guard to achieve disaster recovery between these two uh, data centers. So the first step in this process is for us to log on to the dashboard. And from here, we're going to navigate to the network and console and create a virtual cloud network or VCN. So this is similar to a VPC on ITC on AWS. Where it's, uh, allows us to create our own network topology of private subnets and public subnets and to place um, instances within this VCN. So everything in Oracle, everything on the bare metal cloud goes within a compartment. We're going to go with the easy option here of configuring the resources with the VCN. So next we want to navigate to database and database systems within our console. And from here we're going to launch a database system. So we're going to launch the first one in AD1, Availability Domain 1. We're going to choose a bare metal, high I.O. shape, bare metal shape, and its extreme performance is the addition. We'll copy our public key here into the launch wizard, so we're going to connect later on with the private key. We're going to go with a, at the start, we're just going to go with a CPU core count of 2, but this can be anything, any multiple up to 36. We'll paste in our public key here. Next, we want to choose the VCN we just created, which we call DR VCN. We'll choose the public the AD public subnet and AD1. We'll give our database a name. ORCL is the standard. We're going to choose 12.2 as the database version. The PDB needs a name, and we'll give it a strict admin password. We have the option of choosing one of two different types of databases. In this case, we're going with OLTP. So we're going to create a standby database in the second availability domain within the same region. So again, we'll go to high I.O., bare metal shape, extreme performance, database edition. And it's the same process again, where we copy the public key in, in the launch wizard, and we'll connect later with the private key pair. Again, we'll choose the same VCN, obviously. This time it's public subnet 82. And our prefix is standby. Again, we'll go with the mirror the same choices we made in the previous database system. And again, we're going in OLTP database, not DSS. So to allow password less connectivity between the two database systems. We're going to log in as the OPC, OPC user to database primary, switch to the Oracle username. And here we create a new key pair with the standard SSH key gen command. We'll do an LS to confirm it's there. You can see the public key. We we'll cut that out to the screen so we can copy and paste it. And we're now going to log into the standby instance, switch to the Oracle username. And we're going to add this uh, public key to the authorized key set file. And we'll follow the same process here where we're going to create a key pair using the same key gen command on our standby instance. And again, we're going to copy this public key into the authorized keys file on our, on our primary database this time. So it's the same process. We're going to cut the public key out the screen, copy it to the clipboard and then log back into our, our primary instance and 
copy this into the into the authorized key file. So we can now connect to the primary from we can connect to the standby from the primary instance and vice versa. Because we've set this up with the corresponding authorized key files. I'll just verify that works. Now in order to find the primary database information, we go to our SSH connection on our primary instance. We switch to the root user with sudo su. I use this dbcli list database. So dbcli is the command line tool. It's, sort of, it's the same as the old ODA CLI tool. It's just basically rebadged. And this is, these are the commands we can use to find such information. So we can use that dbcli list db homes to find this information we require. Next up, we'll create the standby database system. So this time we'll log on to the standby uh, database system with the OPC user and sudo su into the root user. And from here we can run the command create database. So the dbcli tool is similar to the old ODA CLI tool where we can create a database, give it a name, a username and password, and set various parameters. It should be confirmed out the screen when we run it and we can verify it's running correctly with the dbcli lists jobs command. Once we do that, we get confirmation of that there. So the next step to prepare the, the primary database system is to log on to the SSH connection. And we need to configure the static listener. So we do so as follows. We'll log in as the grid user. And we'll cd to the network admin directory. So we want to confirm the files we want that there. And then we're going to... Use the VI editor to edit the listener file. Listener.ora file. And here we'll edit as follows. We need to put in this very information we got in the previous commands. Do WQ to write, to write and to quit, and then we're going to stop and restart the listener. So the next step is to add the net service names to the TNS names, the ORA file. We want to log in as Oracle user to the primary database, cd to the Oracle home network admin, do an ls, and again we're editing the same file, write and quit that file again. Next up we configure the database parameters. So this involves connecting to the SQL command prompt. Um, so we need to set our ORENV environment variable first, and we're going to SQL plus in as the sysadmin. So we have to run various SQL commands from here. First one is to set the standby file management file management parameter to auto. Next we need to set the broker configuration files with this command. So at each stage we get confirmation. Next we need to enable the broker daemon process for the database. So we can set that to true. We need to force logging in the database if it's not already set. Next we need to add the standby redo logs based on the online redo logs. So we do so with this command. Next we can check the archive lists and enable database flashback. The first step again is to configure the static listener. And so this is basically the same process as the primary instance. We need to log in as the OPC user and sudo it to the grid user. We're going to cd to the network admin file and then ls to confirm the files are there and then vi into the listener.ora file. I'll write and quit that and then we need to stop and start the listener again with the service control command. We can check the status using the listener control status parameter. 
and we're on to the next step then is to add the service names to the TNS or as file. So to do so we'll cd to the network admin file directory again and do an ls. We confirm the files we want are there and we're going to set up the TNS or file with the vi command. We need to paste in the following parameters. We can get all these from the console or the previous command and we'll write and quit out of that again. So we'll copy the wallets then to the standby system. So scp the following file path into the, the destination directory on the right. So the next step is to create the following directory in the admin or cl directory path. I'm going to create a temporary password file with the following command. So it's the command here is aura pwd and then we need to enter in the following file path directory with the correct password and entries parameter. Next we need to verify the standby database is available. So again we can set the environment variable as orcl. We're going to cd to the oracle home. Again, we need to verify the following information. Well, SQL plus in is the sysdba. And we're going to shut down the database instance and start up with no mount mode to confirm this. So we can navigate to the VCN and to the security list to confirm that 15, port 1521 is open. So we can see the ports open there for both primary and standby database systems. So we can check the connectivity to the standby database from our primary instance with the following command. So we can connect to the target and auxiliary database with the following command, or man target command. can run this Orman duplicate command. Check the logs for no errors. Next we need to enable database flashback. And we can do so at the SQL prompt with this command. Stop and remove the database service and then create the database service with these commands. So, again, we'll use the service control command and the start parameter and specify our database. And then we can remove the, the ORC of the OR files. Again, we'll cd to the Oracle Home DBS directory path, the NLS to confirm what files are there. We're going to vi to create the init.ora um, orcl correct file. And again, we'll stop the database with the service control command with the stop parameter and then specify the database and restart it with the similar command. So next up we're going to configure DataGuard. We can set this up with the familiar DataGuard uh, manager command we use on premise today on our database system. And this should give us the familiar prompt that you use every day on premise. Again we're going to connect as the sys uh, database system uh, with sys credentials. So we can create the configuration with the same command syntax we'd use on premise. So we're going to set up the primary database as the database we, we specify and obviously set up the standby as well. We should see confirmation in the output our command is successful. 
So we can add the primary database as the connect identifier and enable the configuration. So this should all look very familiar to anyone who uses this on premise today. Next, we'll verify our configuration is correct. So we can check the following parameters with the SQL command. And we can connect to the standby database as well. Again, the following SQL command will confirm if these parameters are set correctly. We can verify the correct processes are initiated in the standby database. And the parameter configuration of the primary also. As well as the standby with a similar command. Verify the configuration is working correctly with the verbose option and show configuration. Again, we'll use the same command on the standby database. So, next we need to check everything is working as it should be. So, we can do so by logging into the primary database and we're going to create a HR user with the following SQL command. Now we're connected, we're going to run and create some data. So we just create a simple table and add some data into it. So we'll obviously commit this data into the database. So now we can log into the standby database to check this data is replicated onto the standby. So next we'll Confirm this setup is working by doing a failover. So in the data guard manager command line, just do the switch over command to our standby. We should see confirmation in the output. Again, we'll switch over to the primary. We can reinstate the primary again. Once we do so, we should connect as the sys user and we can verify this information is correct. If we do so, we can fail over to our primary. We're confirming everything is working as it should be. So in this video, we've recreated this following architecture with a primary and database primary and standby database system in different availability domains within the same region using data guard in this case.